So an episode about 2020. That's why we're in the studio. That's really cool. Uh, what I've been doing is I've been actually working on a couple more projects, uh, mostly at the Bank of Latvia. Um, but before that, I worked on uh, several other projects. I know this is called a weekly vlog. Now it's a yearly or annual vlog. Uh, there was this interesting system for political parties that, that uh, uh, my team and I built, which was actually pretty cool. It's again an internal system. Um, what it did was it allowed political parties to enter their finance data, financial data. So financial parties, financial things of the parties. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so... Uh, Stop the game. No, I will not. Yeah, so, so in this system, uh, what we wanted to do was understand discrepancies in financial data of political parties. So when a political party receives a donation or spends some money during a campaign, during a political campaign, uh, I mean, you got to know whether the party received, uh, you know, donations from corrupt, corrupt people or, or the party overspent money. Uh, so basically what the system does is it gathers all this data, understands the risk associated with this data, and you know helps the uh, authority understand when something is wrong with the uh, with the specific political party. After that, I worked with the police. All right, but then in any case, uh, 2020 has been very troubled, uh, obviously due to Corona. Well, technology industry wasn't that affected. Actually, it was positively affected um, because most of my friends uh, were actually getting more orders than before because everyone decided, okay, so it's the time to build uh, uh, I don't know, e-commerce stores. So all the small shops that you know only had this brick and mortar uh, uh, type of business are now e-commerce. Uh, people and they you know have campaigns on Facebook and Instagram and everywhere uh, so it's actually been quite <laughs> quite some good time I don't build e-commerce websites though I didn't feel that uh, feel it that much actually one cool thing that happened in Latvia was uh, the government allowed the sales of alcohol online you know because they didn't want people going to the stores uh, so even alcohol stores and breweries and everyone started building their own e-commerce stores which is really you know it has affected uh, technology and everything yeah quite positively actually i have a presentation about uh the things that you can use in 2020 uh in order to grow your business so it's a saturday it's nice weather outside and we're going to sigulda uh, it should be, uh, like it's actually, there's a thing called Golden Autumn in Latvia. Well, is best seen in Segulda, uh, which is actually a medieval uh, city. Uh, there's a castle that was built in, in 13th century and it's, it, it should be a pretty cool trip. Okay, so we just arrived with the city B and uh, the proof that we are in Sigulda is the auto. No, it's, it's the kebab of Sigulda. Let me zoom in. Uh, otherwise, you won't see much because the trees are still green. Okay, so it turns out the just like I said, the golden autumn hasn't started yet but it has uh, but uh, Rosalia said she will have some post-production stuff some color <laughs> so no so no one ever knows really yellow but one more now we're gonna go check whether we can see the castle of Sigulda built by the uh, Livonian order Oh, no. this is... 
So we're now crossing the the bridge over Gaoya and hopefully arriving at the Tura the castle. So we are going to Turai the castle, but we took a route that no one has ever taken. Let me show you why. So basically, this trail here starts in the middle of the road. It's basically not about this trail because no one has taken this trail. During the Livonian times, the smiths, uh, people who were working with metal and making uh, tools and weapons, were actually mythical because uh, people believed that if you can work with metal and fire to craft something useful, it's almost like magic. Went to an antique shop just now. You can see all the teak chairs. Actually, just talking about these, these were quite nice. Actually, I have a presentation about uh, the things that you can use in 2020 uh, in order to grow your business. And so, one of them is actually mobile apps, which is very obvious. Uh, I mean, you can use mobile apps in almost any industry. The cool and nice things about apps are the sensors that you have in your smartphone, which you don't have online. I mean, uh, on an app, you can use gyroscope. One thing that I was showing is actually beacons. A beacon is a small, uh, is a small kind of stone, a technological stone uh, that you can put anywhere in the room and uh, your phone knows the distance between this beacon and the phone. But when you take this beacon, you take four of them and you put one beacon uh, in uh, each of the sides of the room. And you come in the room with your phone and suddenly the phone knows the distance between each side of the wall of the room, right? So four, four, four sides and you know, uh, the distance between each, between you and each of the sides. And what that means is that you can build a really cool map. So if you've ever seen Harry Potter and, you know, Dumbledore has this really cool map with the students, because mobile apps can use sensors of the phone, unlike websites, you can build this, you can suddenly build this really cool map. I mean, if you have a huge factory or, or I mean, whatever, and your visitors or your employees or whoever have phones with them, suddenly you can have a huge map and know where each of the employees are exactly. Raspberry Pi is a $30 uh, computer. It's got everything that you need. I mean, just again, imagine this, it's a $30 computer. It's got everything. It's got Wi-Fi, it's got RAM, it's got storage, everything. Um, but the only difference between a real computer and a Raspberry Pi is that you can connect to a Raspberry Pi uh, with cables. You can actually connect your light system or uh, your camera system to a Raspberry Pi. Virtual reality. Again, we all think that virtual reality is basically games, but it's not. Example of a Spanish startup that started using virtual reality to help kids, uh, uh, to actually help nurses, administer uh, shots for kids. So 
Yeah, imagine this. So uh, a nurse is coming out with a syringe, uh, trying to give a shot to a kid. Obviously, the kid is scared, is afraid, and all of these things. And what they, what the Spanish startup did was they gave virtual reality glasses. Uh, and when the nurse came, it was all synchronized. It was really cool technology. When the nurse came and administered the shot, what they, what they saw in this virtual reality was a superhero coming to them and putting, you know, something on their arm. And they were all like, yeah, wow, really cool. So one way to apply virtual reality in medicine, not just games, even in medicine. And the last thing, uh, machine learning. But this is going to be another episode. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, please follow me and subscribe, like it and share it with your friends to see more content just like this. If you have any questions, comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.